Hi everyone, welcome to another psych student video. Today we'll be looking at one of the more complex medications in psychiatry, clozapine. Clozapine has several different brand names um, and is one of the medications where it's important to remember and prescribe accordingly. So these can include Densipine, Clozaril, Zapanex, but there are others as well. Clozapine is prescribed for lots of different reasons, most commonly treatment resistant schizophrenia can also sometimes be used to reduce suicidal behaviour within schizophrenia or in schizoaffective disorder. It can be helpful where dyskinesia is a difficulty or in Parkinson's disease where there are psychotic symptoms as it can have less extra pyramidal side effects and in some cases treatment resistant bipolar. So as I say it's a type of antipsychotic um, and this has lots of different mechanisms of action. So it's not just dopamine specific. Firstly, we're looking at serotonin receptors. There's alpha receptors, muscarinic receptors, histamine receptors, and then there are some dopamine receptors, but particularly both D2 and D4. The action on positive symptoms is antagonism in these dopamine receptors. Um, but for the negative symptoms of schizophrenia, things like the cognitive impairment, we're looking actually at serotonin for these effects. Histamine can be linked with some of the side effects of sedation and weight gain. Alpha receptors with hypotension and the muscarinic receptors can have the anticholinergic actions. Um, dry mouth and constipation are also linked with this receptor. So when we start clozapine, it's quite a difficult one to begin with because there's lots of factors to think about so clearly to start with we need to discuss it with the person uh, and either obtain consent or be treating them within another structure such as mental health law we need to get baseline blood tests particularly a full blood count but also the same kind of tests would use for any type of antipsychotic because it could have potential side effects we need to know about um, we'd need to inform the baseline monitoring agency so for example if we had clozaril We'd have to inform the Clozaril monitoring service of our intention to start the drug and our pharmacy and only a consultant psychiatrist can authorise commencement of clozapine. When we then titrate the drug we have to start off with a low dose and this will be on a basic regime that goes up usually each day to begin with depending on the response and the side effects experienced. Throughout that time we need careful monitoring of blood pressure and heart rate to make sure the effects aren't too high and of side effect monitoring so making sure they're not developing really severe constipation or hypersalivation early on. The titration regime happens over a few weeks um, to get to a therapeutic dose and then we can do blood clozapine levels as well as FBCs to see if we're at the therapeutic range. The FBC is really important to monitor because of the potential for clozapine to reduce neutrophil counts. Um, and prompt a granulocytosis. So to help monitor that, we have to check the FBC weekly for 18 weeks, then fortnightly for the rest of that year, and then monthly. And those results are fed back to the drugs monitoring service. So there's lots of side effects we need to be very careful of, particularly as they can cause people to disengage from treatment. Sedation is particularly of a problem. And then we look at things like constipation. So people can get really severe constipation um, to the point where it becomes really uh, difficult for patients, could be very painful, could become obstructive. So we need to be very careful and treat that very early. Uh, hypersalivation can actually be a significant risk, particularly to obstruction of airways at night time. And weight gain and metabolic effects could put people at risk of things like diabetes, which are potentially very long term serious effects. There are movement problems evident in generally as antipsychotics, so we need to be careful. And clozapine particularly can, can decrease blood pressure and increase heart rate. There are life threatening effects from clozapine, things like tardive dyskinesia, which is evident in lots of different antipsychotics. Similarly, NMS, so neuroleptic malignant syndrome, is something we need to be very careful of. Clozapine particularly has its effects on the cardiac function, so things like myocarditis. If someone on clozapine says they have any kind of chest pain, it's really important to get an ECG. Seizures, particularly if you have got the doses um, essentially out, so if they have too high a dose, their level is too high in the blood, or if there's metabolic syndrome, things like diabetic ketoacidosis could um, result. 
agranulocytosis is something I mentioned already, so we just need to be very, very careful of those full blood counts. So there is other information that's really important to think about when commencing clozapine therapy. One that trips up people a lot, particularly if they change hospitals, is missing doses. So if a patient misses 48 hours worth of doses, so usually four doses, then we really need to retitrate from scratch. Potentially, they've built up quite a lot of tolerance to the medication. And if we restart it too quickly, those effects on the cardiac function that they might have developed some tolerance to, so the potential for hypotension or high heart rate, could become much more problematic if suddenly restarted at high dose. If the neutrophils drop, the uh, monitoring service for that drug will alert us that it's either an amber or a red result. And dependent on that, we might need to increase how often we're monitoring or stop the drug. And the levels are particularly altered by things like smoking and caffeine. So if someone suddenly gives up smoking or starts smoking, we need to be mindful of that as well. And of course, with any drug, there's lots of interactions we need to be very careful of. So some top tips for you. Seek help really early on from a pharmacist, particularly if you're working in a non-psychiatric setting. Ensure that the monitoring is in place and that we're up to date and treat side effects early. Further information can be found in the BNF. There's a great book, Essential Neuropharmacology, and any local guidelines as well. If you enjoyed this video, please do like, subscribe and share. Thank you very much.